Another uh, major issue is the values we want on our children and why obedience is off the list. This is on the front page of The Times. There's been a big survey about what we want in our children, whether we want them to be meek little sitting in the corner seen and not heard kids. Good manners are still crucial, but the importance we place on children doing as, the, as they're told appears to have plummeted in the last 30 years. Let's talk to Amanda Gummer, who's a child psychologist. Um, Amanda, you're very welcome to Talk TV. What do you make of this survey? Thank you. Yeah, it's an interesting one, isn't it? And I don't think it's bad news. Depends on what you mean by obedience. And I think in this context, I think we're we're less in, less keen for our children to just have that blind obedience. And we want them to develop those really important critical thinking skills, independence and that kind of thing. I think which the two are, you know, we're not saying parents shouldn't be setting boundaries and expecting their children to... to stick to the boundaries and also it really matters or it really depends on what age the kids are as to how important sort of those boundaries and that obedience is. I don't have kids but I do have a nephew and I remember when he was three I remember saying uh, my brother was in the room and I said you know Charlie do you want to wear your red jumper or your blue jumper my brother said no 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 you just put the jumper you choose the jumper you put the jumper on him and that's the way things are and actually there are lots of children uh, who seem to be kind of negotiated with by their parents that I'd see all the time in supermarkets and cafes adults trying to negotiate with very small children four and five year olds saying please can you do this because it's annoying other people I mean, sometimes the messages just need to be a bit more direct, I think, to kids, and you need to basically be reasonable about their level of intelligence and understanding of things. Yeah, and, and the red and blue jumper is actually a really good example because if you if you give a two-year-old a free choice as to what they, what they want to wear, they're likely to be going to school in a Superman costume. Yes. If you, but actually giving them the, letting them practice making decisions is really good. It's that sort of letting the, the sort of building that trust and giving them age appropriate levels of autonomy so you can choose between a red or a blue jumper but you're going to wear a jumper is kind of the implicit message there which is it gives them a sense of some control which is really important for them to learn how to use that control and make those decisions and um, as they get older they need more of that because they do need that independence because lack of autonomy i think is one of the biggest issues that we have fueling the mental health crisis it's a very interesting some of these percentages are quite interesting as well the proportion of british people who thought children should be taught obedience fell from 42 percent in 1990 to 12 percent hard work was chosen by 48 percent up from 29 percent in 1990 those valuing determination and perseverance rose from 31 percent to 41 percent and imagination climbed from 18 percent to 37 percent what do you make of those so I think that's quite a commentary on where we're at at the moment. And especially if you look across the world, the, the findings from the other countries, I think um, I think there's a general sense that life is harder in the UK now than it was 10, 20 years ago. So hard work is we need and perseverance and those kind of traits is something that we want for our children because we want them to be successful. And, and, we want and resilient. Yeah, exactly. Absolutely. So I think those things become more important because of the state of the country at the moment, I think, and, and parents, um, and it's the same with sort of um, independent thinking, um, critical analysis, those kind of skills. That's more important because of what's going on with the internet and the fact that we don't want kids to get sucked into cults and just follow things blindly. We want to teach them those really important thinking skills. Um, I'll declare my interest, but if you are childless and you see children acting uh, badly, is it ever appropriate to say to the parents, actually, do you know what, I'm just here in a cafe, would you ever pipe down? I would love it if we could get to a point where you could say that and the parents wouldn't take it as a personal criticism of their parenting. Yep. Because I think it should be okay for you to say, I'm just, you know, I'm trying to take a call here and your kid's screaming, would you mind just, you know take him outside or you know, would you mind not letting him kick the back of my chair on the bus or that kind of thing. I think that should be perfectly reasonable to say. It shouldn't mean that you're a bad parent. It just means we're in this together. I know it's hard and, and I don't want to talk to your child about this because it's not my place, but he's not doing so, he or she is not doing something that is socially acceptable. Can well, you have one? And I think that should, I, I, I would love it if that was, if that was okay, but a lot of people don't feel like it is. And so we end up with a, a vicious circle where the fewer people that speak up about it means that when people do speak up about it, they're really stigmatised and, and it's, it's seen as outrageous. Totally agree with you.